babasahin ang guna po yung salmo. Ay, yung salmo? Teka. Yung text kasi naka-cords. Naka-i-dwise ko yung iwan ng cords. Pero yun, yun ay ganito rin. Yun ay nandoon. Yung nabasa ko kanina. Ay, sorry. Yung nagagalit. Nandoon naman siguro. Yung sa set, yun ay kompleto ng kanyang trigger. Kasi nang kakaka. Hindi ito. Teka. Ah, asan din po yan talaga? Yung ano yun. Ma-i-open. Nandun siya. Nandun siya sa set of books. Mike this.
distance the yes remained through sunlight bright and tender rains in storm drenched nights when shadows Sound check, sound check. Changing seasons, the yes remain. 
afternoon to also our participants via live stream. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration, a Mass in honor of Father Blessed Barriugian of the Child Jesus, especially as we celebrate the 100 years of his sacerdotal uh, ordination to priesthood. Let us prepare ourselves for the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. The Spirit hovered over the waters. By the choice and strength of the Holy Spirit, a choice came upon a certain angry Grialu from Aviron in southern France. One day, I will be a priest. I want to become a priest. His heart was bent on seeking God's plan for him. There was no place for hesitation. As soon as God manifested his light, angry had only to follow it. He affirmed, I want the absolute. I opted for the priesthood. On February 4, 1922, Angri Grialu was ordained. I am a priest, a priest for eternity. I am a priest. These words penetrate me. They are enough for me and I should like to hear nothing else today. This longed-for dream has come true. I offer myself to you, O Jesus, for everything you want, for peace and joy, as well as for darkness and suffering. But teach me to be virtuous like you, to remain docile to your divine will. The Spirit of God hovered over the waters. The Holy Spirit glorifies the instrument He has chosen. On November 19, 2016, Father Angri Grialu, known in the Order of Carmel as Father Marie Eugene of the Child Jesus, was recognized by the Holy Mother Church as Blessed Marie Eugene. The greatest gift we can offer to humanity is to become a saint. Blessed Marie Eugène finds delight in the embrace of the Holy Spirit. In the embrace of the Holy Spirit, he is ever the instrument of the Spirit for the work he has begun on earth. 
He continues to nourish and guide us walk towards the future, disposing us for the new blossoming to be witnesses of the Spirit who unceasingly renew the face of the earth. Today, we are gathered to celebrate and praise the Lord for these 100 years. He has done everything. Let us rejoice and sing songs of thanksgiving and implore His grace to carry on in our memories, in our hearts, in our words and deeds, the life and teachings of Blessed Maria Eugene and become faithful witnesses of the gospel. Together with Most Reverend Milo Vergara, Bishop of the Diocese of Pasig, let us all rise and joyfully sing our hymn of praise. celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
pray. God, rich in mercy, you have given Blessed Maria Eugene of the Child Jesus grace and light to guide your people towards the fullness of Christ through the way of contemplative prayer and missionary witness. Grant us through his prayer to grow in docility to the Holy Spirit and to work in faith for the coming of your kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock while he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I will lead them out from among the peoples and gather them from the foreign lands. I will bring them back to their own country and pasture them upon the mountains of Israel, in the land's ravines and all its inhabited places. In good pastures will I pasture them, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing ground. There they shall lie down on good grazing ground, and in rich pastures shall they be pastured on the mountains of Israel. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Bishop Milo, Bishop Ben, brother priests, my dear brothers and sisters in the institute, family members, friends. How do you measure one's life? More difficult to answer is, how do you measure one's priesthood? How do you put in one mass 100 years of priesthood? Is it possible? Yes, because the Holy Eucharist echoes in eternity. Priesthood echoes in eternity. Je suis prêtre, prêtre pour l'éternité. I am a priest, a priest forever. Ako ay pari, pari magpakailanman. Words of Reverend Father Henri Alfred Miral Grialu uttered in the evening of Saturday at around 6.30 p.m. of February 4, 1922. 
It was the very evening of his ordination to the priesthood in the major seminary of Rodez. I am a priest. With his words began his pitimo, or short message, a meditation on the grace of the moment, on the grace of priesthood that he received, but not him alone. This short message was on behalf of the other six new priests ordained with him by Monsignor Verdier, words delivered without notes. Ilan ang kaya ang marami sa mga pari na kayang magbigay ng kanilang uh, humiliya ng walang tinitingnan na kopyahan. Without notes because these words would be inspired by the Holy Spirit. That we can say now that they already contained the seed that would bear fruit in the future. And so these first words as a priest would become words that would echo through the years to today, February 4, 2022, exactly a hundred years later, causing joy to spring up from our jubilant hearts as we celebrate the centenary, the jubilee of the gift of priesthood that the little boy Rico from Luga in Averon received. I was often going up the road that leads to the priest house and I would sit on the wall, and there I was, looking. It is then that I decided to be a priest. Un jour, je serai prêtre. Words of a future shepherd, reverberating today beyond the walls of this chapel of Notre Dame de Vie in Encanto, and through the power of social media, to the global internet community, but always in harmony with the songs of Laudate and Magnificat sung today, not only here, but in other places in many countries, where the Order of Carmel and our humble little Institutum Notre Dame de Vie have taken root with its three branches, the foyer and its associates, along with schools like Mother of Life Center, Mount Carmel School of Infanta, Colegio de Santa Monica, not to mention the other schools in other countries entrusted to Notre Dame de Vie members, and wherever the spiritual children of Father Henri Grielu are present. Now, Blessed Father Marie Eugene of the Child Jesus. And yet, those words, I am a priest, are not originally his, but also mere echoes of the scriptures from the Psalm of David pertaining to the longed for Messiah that will bud forth from his royal family and later thrice repeated by the letter to the Hebrews when that prophecy to David finally came to be a reality. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Words finding its concrete fulfillment in the very person, very life and mission of our Lord Jesus Christ, unique and eternal high priest from whom all priesthood come. I am a priest forever. What vast horizon that these words hide to give us the meaning intended. What is the unimaginable power these words veil? Throughout 100 years, they simply become palpable, tangible, and in real time because of the gospel, which is timeless. The core message of the gospel that we have heard today is from the priestly prayer of Christ in the Last Supper, which is also the central message of the whole gospel. God loves us. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. Keep my commandments. Love one another as I do you that my joy might be in you, a joy that is complete. And there is no greater love than this, to sacrifice one's life for one's friends. To be a priest, my dear brothers and sisters, is to love God, keeping His commandments. To be a priest is to find joy in loving others. To be a priest is to give up one's life for His friends. To be a priest is to love God, 
and keep His commandments. Obedience of faith. Faith exercised also through prayer. A succession of acts of faith according to Marie Eugene. Prayer as the encounter of two loves. Prayer like the sun, center of all the preoccupations of the day. Every evening I have the impression that it is the only important thing that I have done. Prayer is to seek God. It gives us the experience of God. And we seek Him in faith. One must exercise this faith. Father Marie Eugene thus became an authentic disciple and friend of the masters of prayer in Carmelite spirituality, now doctors of the church, Santa Teresa of Avila, San Juan de la Cruz, Saint Therese of the Child Jesus and the Holy Face, whose experiences he would later synthesize and make his own in his masterpiece, Je veux voir Dieu. I want to see God. I am the daughter of the church, which a few Christmases ago was even given by Pope Francis as a gift to the College of Cardinals. But already in his pitimo, in his short message of 1922, Angri Grelu already prayed, My prayer must be a testimony of my gratitude, ardent, universal, empowered by priestly authority, May my ordination be a feast for everyone. And then, right away, he prays for all people, his family, his professors, his fellow seminarians, his fellow soldiers in the Great War, the souls in purgatory, etc., etc. Priest, man of prayer, apostle of prayer, prayer as the act of mediation, in the very manner and example of Christ. To be a priest is to give up one's life for his friends, renouncing oneself, taking up one's cross daily in order to follow Christ and be with him in the ultimate act of sacrifice. In his pitimo, Angri Grialu asks God, What shall I render you, Lord, for all your gifts to me? And he answers with Psalm 116, I will offer the chalice of salvation. And he adds, You desire to associate me with your sacrifice? I will be the victim of praise. Then he continues, But teach me to be virtuous like you, to remain supple under your divine will. Priesthood tested, purified. As a child, material poverty would be the challenge to his pursuit of seminary education. He had to go away from family on a scholarship in Italy. Coming back, his widowed mother would have to take double jobs in order to support his studies. As a mature adolescent, World War I, hard, terrible, savage, would interrupt his studies and at the same time tempt him to abandon priesthood in favor of a brilliant military career. Yet, you know the story. His priestly vocation was much stronger. J'ai opté pour le prêtre à fond. Later, his vocation for Carmel would confront violent oppositions from his bishop, his spiritual director, and his very own mother. He dreamt rather of a parish life for her favorite son. And that was only the beginning. He would face similar challenges as Carmelite priest and later founder of Notre Dame de Vie until his eventual illness. Jesus showed me that I will fulfill the role he wants to entrust to me by suffering. I have suffered much during my life. It is necessary if we are to be fruitful, it is by my suffering and my death that I am founder. Last point, to be a priest is to find joy in loving others. This he will exercise by being a shepherd, a spiritual father, and guide. In other words, a witness of charity towards all. 
God tells the prophet Ezekiel in the first reading, I will look after my sheep, the lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the sick I will heal. Why? Because the love of God cannot be contained. God is bonum diffusivum sui. God's goodness diffusive of itself, according to St. Thomas, which Father Mariujan loved to quote. Later, he would confide to Marie Pila, one of the first three members of Notre Dame de Vie and eventually first responsible general of the women's branch, the very inspiration for the foundation. The love of God wants to spread itself and looks for souls in all places to call them towards intimacy, to unveil to them the secrets of his heart, not only in the world of monasteries, but in the suburbs, on the boulevards, everywhere where there are souls that God calls to his divine intimacy. Later, he would also affirm, I am made to lead people to God. The souls who are looking for God are everywhere. Oh, how I would like to reach them all and talk to them about the love that is infinite. Brothers and sisters, we may ask, how would this happen concretely? This newly found fervor in serving the building of the body of Christ, the church. Well, by the power of that same love of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father Mariujan would zero in on one important teaching that link theological vocation, the prophetic spirit, in our filial relationship with God and with the Blessed Virgin Mary. Very consistent with Vatican II's teaching on the universal call to holiness. Yes, you guessed it, baptismal grace. Our participation in the very life of God, allowing us to cooperate, collaborate with God's work through the virtues of faith, hope, and love received by every baptized. It is not surprising then that the most quoted biblical reference in I want to see God is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. In 1954, Father Mariujan would write to Miss Marie-Louise Gu, to whom he entrusted the organization of the foundation of Notre Dame de Vie in the Philippines. He writes, Remember, bear witness to the living God, to the spirit of love, neither to a civilization nor even to a conceptualized doctrine. Rather, enter deeply in God. Give your testimony to the truth and to the love that is God. Do this as you can by speaking, by working, by suffering. Testimony alone counts. To be a priest then, my dear brothers and sisters, whether by baptismal priesthood or by ministerial priesthood, is simply to be a humble witness of God's love in the ordinary day-to-day -day life. I believe it is providential that as we have just celebrated the 500 years of Christianity in our country, we find in the same timeline the 100 years of priesthood of Father Marie Eugene. And just two days ago, the 75 years of Provida Mater Ecclesia, which gave the impulse for secular institutes. In Pope Francis' letter to mark the occasion, and consistent with his call in Fratelli Tutti and in the Synod of, on Synodality, the Holy Father emphasizes, there is a new step to be taken, not just to come out of the sacristies in order to bring Jesus to the world, but being receptive antennas, transmitting messages, even the smallest innovations prompted by the Holy Spirit. In a post-COVID world described as volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, marked by the culture of death, the tyranny of relativism, and globalization of indifference, what could we learn, we ordinary people, attending the celebration tonight?
It was given to us by Cardinal Amato on the moment of the beatification of Blessed Father Marie Eugene. Only three small phrases. Forget everything that I've said, but remember these three. Father Marie Eugene's prayer is an expression of profound faith. His trust in God's providence amidst difficulties is fruit of his hope. His joy in whatever apostolate entrusted to him is a manifestation of his charity. Father Marie Eugene simply lived his baptismal grace. Let me end by how Reverend Father Henri Grielu ended his pity move 100 years ago this evening at 6.30 p.m. And you, Mary, I cannot forget you, but what can I offer you? I owe you all, for you have led me and made me what I am. Therefore, I will give you everything, especially this heart overflowing with joy. Contemplate your work. You are my mother, and as a priest, I want to remain your child more than ever. Amen. Please all stand. Celebrating in joy and in hope the fidelity of love and friendship of the Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we humbly present to Him our supplications as we say, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for the leaders of the Church that they become ever more attentive to the living and active presence of the Holy Spirit so that they may guide and lead the members to grow and increase in holiness. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all nations that peace, justice, harmony be restored in the land so that the citizens may live in freedom and seek full human development of their grace. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for the members, foyer, friends, benefactors of the Institute of Notre Dame de Vie, celebrating the centenary of the priesthood of Blessed Father Marie Eugene, that they may give witness to the living God in prayer and action well united and lead souls to the good God. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are suffering in poverty, illness, especially COVID-19, discrimination, loneliness, and the dying that they may find solace and comfort in the gift of the Holy Spirit, making resemblance to the suffering Jesus and imprinting his image on their faces. We also pray for our beloved dead, Elise Lagarig and Albert Dormitorio. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all of us present in this celebration, that we may journey together with Blessed Father Marie Eugene of the Child Jesus to live fully the grace of Carmel and complete trust in the Virgin Mary, to give witness to mercy and compassion. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. 
Father in heaven, send us the spirit of wisdom to purify our hearts, mind, and soul. And make us truly your children, faithful to your teachings. Through Christ our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Pray now, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice as our hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Be pleased to accept, Lord God, the sacrifice that we offer with sincere heart on the feast of Blessed Mary Eugene of the Child Jesus, faithful to His teaching. We offer ourselves completely to you as we celebrate and praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for your praise in the company of your saints and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship.
by their intercession, sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so, Lord, with the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with His Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May He make of us a royal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with blessed, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Marie Eugene of the child Jesus, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope. Dennis, our Bishop, Bishop Milo, who is presiding over this Mass, Bishop Ben Almoneda, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Lord Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, bless are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Please all stand.
let us pray. All-powerful God, may this communion at the heavenly table strengthen with power from on high all those who celebrate the feast of Blessed Maria Eugene of the Child, Jesus. Help us to keep the gift of faith in its fullness and to walk on the path of salvation offered us through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we turn our gaze to the Blessed Virgin Mary, who has led and made Blessed Maria Eugene of the Child, Jesus, to what he is. Please be seated for a while. We will listen to Bishop Milo's uh, meditation. Brothers and sisters, uh, good evening. You know, when I was invited to celebrate this Mass, when Margie Recho called me up and uh, asked me to preside over the celebration, um, it was very clear to me that I had a message to deliver on this centenary of uh, the priesthood of uh, uh, Blessed Father Marie Eugene of the, uh, Eugene of the Child Jesus. And uh, I have entitled this reflection, um, The Impact of Notre Dame de Vie and Blessed Father Marie Eugene of the Child Jesus, OCD, in my spirituality as a priest. I'm so blessed to witness in my lifetime not only the beatification of Blessed Father Marie Eugene, that was on November 19, 2016, but also the centenary of his priesthood and entrance to Carmel. The online conferences on Blessed Father Marie Eugene, which you have organized, were very helpful and enlightening. I was able to be sort of up close and personal with this holy man, who without realizing it, has played a significant role in my priesthood. They have always drawn me to reflect on how Notre Dame de VNDV has been part of the formation and deepening of my spiritual life as a priest. Allow me to bring you to my very own memory lane with the NDV. My first encounter with Notre Dame de V was when Father Benjamin Carlos SJ invited Miss Josie de Horas to give a talk on religious psychology 
to the first batch of senior seminarians of Holy Apostle Senior Seminary sometime in 1986. I was part of that batch. I still have the hard copy of her diagram of concentric circles to explain who we are as embodied spirits, empowering us to communion with God in prayer. In fact, this has not only been useful for me, but also for others when I give a talk or, or seminar on prayer. When Monsignor Jesse Mercado, now Bishop of Paranaque, became one of the formators of Hats, Holy Apostles, my close encounters with NDV intensified. I would observe Monsignor Jess frequenting the oratory for an hour of prayer once or twice each day, silently adoring the Blessed Sacrament. At that time, we also observed him spending his Sundays in Avaliches to celebrate Mass at Mother of Life, now NDV Retreat House. He would also go to France for a month of solitude. I did not know why then. Later, I learned that he was a diocesan priest who was affiliated with NDV France. It was also during my seminary formation when I met Miss Marie Louise Gu through Monsignor Jess. While taking my seminary studies, Father Ben introduced me to Carmelite spirituality. He asked me to read St. Teresa of Avila's interior castle and to make a report about it in class. This was one of the requirements I had in our course on St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross to understand midlife transitions. One of the required courses we had in the Haas Formation. My first reading of the interior castle helped me understand my prayer life. From then on, I became interested in reading the collected works of St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross, edited by Kirin Kavano, OCD. Little did I know that I was being prepared to replace Father Ben and teach the course in Haas. My batchmates and I had our retreat facilitated by Bishop Chodoro Bacani before ordination to the diaconate at St. Joseph House in NDV in Novaliches. We had our retreat in preparation for priestly ordination at the Carmelite Monastery in Lipa, Batangas. And when I became priest in 1990 and eventually formator of Haas from 1991 to 2001, that's 10 years, Monsignor Jess requested me to take one Sunday slot in a month to preside over Mass at the main chapel of Mother of Life. I agreed and did this for a number of years, even when Monsignor Jess was appointed rector of Pontificio Collegio Filipino in Rome. During that period, I came to know Ms. Vicky Reyes, Margie Recho, Ms. Juliet Garan, Ms. Frida Jorge, Ms. Ellen Portales, Ms. Lulu Reyes, hindi ko na po babanggit nila, baka magtampuhan pa, napakadami ho nito, no? and many others in the female branch of NDV Institute as well as the Catechetical Center of Mother of Life. As a young priest, they invited me to give formation talks on philosophy and theology to the catechist there. Aside from this, Ms. Ami Sison, who was then in charge of the Institute of Catechetics of the Archdiocese of Manila, Ikan, located in San Carlos Pastoral Formation Complex, also requested me to teach Introduction to Philosophy to Catechists undergoing formation. This was how I got involved with members of the NDV and the formation of Catechists. My desire to learn more about Carmelite spirituality was further concretized when I decided to research and write my licentiate dissertation in Loyola School of Theology 
on St. Teresa of Avila and John of the Cross. When I was doing my research, it was Monsignor Jess Mercado who showed me Blessed Father Marie Eugene's classic opus, I Want to See God and I Am a Daughter of the Church. His book was truly really helpful as I wrote and completed my dissertation entitled The Ideal Spiritual Director According to St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross, mentored by Father Thomas Green, S.J. Life as a seminary formator became emotionally and spiritually exhausting for me. I wanted to have a sabbatical year, but Jaime Cardinal Sin did not allow me. Fortunately, in 1998, I was permitted to go on a mini sabbatical for three months. What would be the most meaningful way to spend this liminal period in my life? I still long to learn more about Carmelite spirituality. Things fell into place. I was able to attend a week-long Carmelite seminar in Notre Dame University, Indiana, USA, and a month-long Carmelite studies program in Washington Theological Union, USA. And to cap my sabbatical, I underwent a month-long solitude in NDV, France, thanks to Ms. Marie-Louise Gu and Ms. Odile Bresolet, who arranged everything for me. Kaya naalala ko pa doon, nung nagbibigay ng talk si Father Xerox, no? doon sa mga nang, yung, dat, yung lugar na, ano, di ba may video? Talagang it was going back, no? kung saan ako nagwawalis doon, kasama ko si Bruno nang nagdadasal doon sa main chapel, di ba? No? Uh, bumalik lahat, no? nung nagvandad siya ko, no? naalala ko, pinagugupit ako ng mga ubas doon, no? hindi ko makakalimutan yun. Kasi minsan nag escape ako, sinusutsutan ako ni Bruno, hoy, hindi ka patapos. Medyo nga. <laughs> I will always treasure in my heart my stay in NDV friends. Since I do not speak French, I was so lucky to be accompanied by Miss Arnie Claborde, who was actually my, my classmate when, we were, when I was taking my Master's Studies in Philosophy. Siyempre, siya pinakamatalino. No? Hindi ko maabot ang utak ni Arnie. No? So, malangit daw ang iyong kaluluwa. And of course, Father Arnold Crisostomo, no? who were there at that time. That is why, when I watched and listened to the talk of Father Xerox Joseph Acosta, I felt that I was really in memory lane. I saw the video of NDV France, seeing the chapels where I prayed for a couple of hours each day, and the cemented pathways where I leisurely walked in contemplative silence. The solitude experience there intensified my desire to pray more and make prayer non-negotiable in my daily life as a priest. While crafting the design of the coat of arms for my Episcopal ordination, I made sure that the image of the Mount of Carmel would be included to highlight the influence of Carmelite spirituality in my life as a priest. When I became bishop, I thought of making my NDV experience part of the formative process of those I will ordain to the sacred orders. So I thought of sending my seminarians, deacons, and young priests here at NDV Institute here in Encanto. Those I have sent here have realized the value of prayer in priestly life. Let me take this opportunity to thank you for accommodating them always. In December 2016, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I can still remember the time when I met Ms. Vicky Reyes at Cardinal Santos Medical Center and shared her about my illness. She just told me to pray to Blessed Father Marie Eugene because he had the same disease, the same sickness. I prayed to a lot of saints, including him. I had my prostate operation in January 2017. Thanks be to God, I'm still alive and serving the church. I know that we will all tread the path of suffering. This may be an illness, a broken
broken relationship, or a crisis in vocation or in ministry. From the reflection of Mr. Eddie Boy Calasans, who was also my mentor when I did my thesis defense, on, um, when he shared the reflection on Blessed Marie, Father Marie Eugene and suffering, I just pray that through the gift of supernatural love, like Blessed Father Marie Eugene, I may be able to embrace whatever suffering goes my way and not just be purified and educated, but identified with Christ in His Paschal Mystery. In all that I have said, I just wonder if Blessed Father Marie Eugene's spiritual shadow actually hovered in my spiritual life as a priest and bishop. I could just imagine. I believe it did. Amen. And now we'll listen a few words from Miss Aya Palma. We heard in the homily of Father Walter that Notre Père, Blessed Father Marie Eugène, considered his ordination as a feast for everyone. Truly, this is a feast not just for us in the Institute, but also for all those linked to our grace, all those who have helped us, all those who have accompanied us. It is in this sense that we would like to express our gratitude to all those who participated in our celebration via live stream, our families, our friends, all those who prepared for this day through their prayers and acts of love and sacrifices and all those who are here with us, the few guests that we have here with us, thank you very much for joining us this day. We would also like to thank our Carmelite fathers, Father Tom and Father Willow the brothers of Blessed Father Marie Eugene in grace. Your presence strengthens also our Carmelite grace. Thank you very much. Thank you very much also, Father Jenny, our faithful and ever supportive friend in the Institute. We would also like to thank uh, Mr. Vincent Floro and company for making possible that those who are not here with us physically will be able to join us and to participate in the grace of today. Thank you also to all the members of the Institute all those who prepared for this day, also in prayers and sacrifices. All those who shared in many ways, seen and unseen, in order to make this celebration meaningful for all of us. Thank you very much. We would like to thank also uh, Bishop Milo 
Thank you very much for presiding over the celebration and sharing with us your grace, your journey with us. Thank you very much for honoring us with your presence today. We would also like to thank Blessed Father Marie Eugene himself, Notre Père, for answering God's call for him to become a priest, for his having surrendered to his grace, to God's grace in him. Here we are now, the fruits of that grace, the fruits of that response. We ask Notre Père that we be faithful to the grace that God has also entrusted to us. <clears throat> Notre Père said his priesthood is for eternity. We ask him to offer us again and again on that pattern which is now with him forever. Like Notre Père said to the Blessed Mother on that day of his ordination that he would like to remain ever her child. He would also like to express to the Blessed Mother that we would like also to remain ever her child. And at the same time, to Notre Père, Notre Père, thank you. We would also like to remain your children here in Notre Dame de Lille. We thank the Blessed Mother, Notre Dame de Lille, of course, for engendering us into this life of grace in the Institute and in the Church and to the Holy Trinity for engendering us in time and giving us Blessed Father Marie Jen Notre Père to accompany us in our journey here on earth as we continue to journey in the Church until we see Notre Père face to face until we see the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit face to face. Amen. Please all stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far from you and in His kindness pour out upon you the gifts of His blessing. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to His words that they may be filled with everlasting gladness. Amen. Amen. And so may you always understand what is good and right and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commands made co-heirs with the citizens of heaven. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
的决定。